Well, everybody, it's Bander Terrell again, and I'm going to do a quick video, I hope it's quick, on how to create a PBR AO material. Um, this is something that I've talked about in a couple of my other videos, but they're pretty long. So I just want to focus on this one aspect of it so you can get a quick, concise view of how to do this. So um, what this is, it's a it's a PBR material that you can use that that is equivalent to using an AO in the old blind fong way of doing things so you need two things you need an ao for your object and you need uh that's just a 2d image the, the traditional ao file you need that and then you also need uh something like photoshop where you can create an image because you have to create a metallic roughness image that uses that ao and that's the one part you have to have a tool for, like Photoshop. Once you're done with that, you don't need to use Photoshop for anything else for this. You can just use that PBR material over and over and over again and create as many textures as you want just using 2D seamless images. So the key is you have to create this PBR AO material. And to do that, you need something like Photoshop. So I use Photoshop, and this is what, what I do. So... Um, I create three layers in Photoshop. The bottom layer is going to be for my blue channel. So RGB, red, green, blue. This is going to be for the blue channel, which is the metallic channel. Normally, that's going to be a 2D image, a 2D grayscale image that you would use to indicate what parts of your um, material you want to be metallic, what parts you don't want to be metallic. White means metallic, black means non-metallic. Well, for this, we want the whole thing to be non-metallic. We're going to use the sliders to control how much metallic we apply, and we want to apply them uniformly. So this only works for things where you're, where you're really using a 2D image and you want uniformity. If you need to have multiple faces or multiple aspects or combining leather and wood and metal all in one, or you want to have bumpiness that is different, you can't use this technique. This is for using... Uh, uniform 2D seamless textures to produce something. So it's a very specific usage, but it's a usage that I think many, many, many builders are going to be able to use very, very well. And uh, unless you're doing really, you know, really interesting things, and then for those, use a regular PBR material. But for, for this, it's going to be great. So you want it to be uniform, and you want it to be uniform non-metallic. So just fill this layer with black. So create this layer. And then go to Edit, Fill, and fill it with black. So select the layer, Edit, Fill, and Fill with black. Okay, then go to the a layer above that, which we're going to call the Roughness layer, and that's for the green channel. And so this is how rough it is. And so this is kind of inverse logic. So roughness means it's really rough surface, and really rough surfaces don't reflect well, right? So if you want something to really reflect well, you need to polish that surface. And so it needs to have no roughness. So this is it's kind of the opposite. So for this one, white means not reflective and black means highly reflective. Well, we don't want any reflections on this because we're going to use the sliders to control how much. And we're going to apply it uniformly. So for this, we want solid white. So you just go to this layer, go to edit, fill, and fill with white. Okay, and then above that, instead of putting, if I'm going to use multiple AOs, and you can do the, you can do this to mass produce these, so I'm going to create a group or uh, yeah, hit the little uh, group icon here. It creates a group, and then I named that AO red. Okay, and this is where I'm going to put all of my AOs. But before we do that, we need to set these up so that they work. And to do that, use blending options. So select this group. And you're going to go to this drop down right here and you're going to pick screen because we use the screen blend option. It says um, it's a layer mask and it's called screen. So you set that to screen. Then right click this and go to blend. You can do this all in one if you do from here. You can go to blending options, which is up here on this one. You can also set it to screen here. So that's two ways to get setting it to screen. But then down here in the middle, you'll see channels. And for this one, we only want the red channel. So make sure red is checked and green and blue are not checked. And then hit OK. Then go to the middle layer, which is our green layer. 
We're going to go to blending options, and for, for this one, it's in the middle here. Set it to screen. You can also set it to screen with this drop down. And then make sure that the channels are set to green only. So red is not checked, green is checked, blue is not checked, and save it. And then on the bottom one, do the same thing. Go to blending options, set it to screen, and then make sure it's set to blue, and then save it. So that means the only th this is going to be our red layer, our green layer, and our blue layer so that we separate these. And then in this group is where you're going to put your AOs. So let me see if I can uh, grab an AO. So do I have any AOs here? Yeah, I have the one for mattress, pillow, where's comforters, comforter. So I'm going to use the pillow one. That way we can see it. So my AOs are this size, but I'm using a 2048 by 2048 image for this uh, metallic roughness. When I created the image, I set it to 2048 by 2048. So I just have to scale this up to fit and just go up until it snaps and then down until it snaps. So it fills up the whole space. So there's my AO for my, my pillow one, and I'm going to put it inside this group. So now it's in here and it gets whatever characteristics I put on the group apply to this. And I don't have to put them on here individually. So this, what you're seeing here, is the combined output. It's the, it's the AO on the red channel, solid white on the green channel, and solid black on the blue channel. It gives us this image. And then all you do is you export. And we're going to export this, and I'm going to call it Pillow 1 Occlusion Roughness Metallic 2. That's, what, that's the name that was there before. That's, that's what I'm going to use. And you can see I've already created one. So this is the second time I've done this. So now I have my metallic roughness with my AO embedded. Uh, now well, let's go back over to Second Life. So then what I want to do is I'm going to go create a new material. So to do that, you go to the Materials tab, right-click and do New Material. And I'm going to call this uh, Test. PBR AO material for pillow one. Long name. All right. And then just double click that to edit it. Now you'll see it comes up and there's nothing in it. So let's upload that image that we just created. Build, upload, image, metallic pillow one. Yeah, that's the one. Yep, that's the one. Upload it. Then we're going to take the one we just uploaded and we're going to drag it over here and we're going to put it into the metallic roughness preview image. Just drop it there. So this says metallic roughness. It's actually ambient occlusion metallic roughness. Now, these are the sliders that I was talking about and these control the metallic nature and the roughness nature. So we don't want any metallic. So set that to zero. And we don't want any roughness we don't want any sh any reflectiveness, so we want full roughness, so set that to 1. So that matches what we put into our image. So this is the same thing as saying black on the blue and white on the green. Their, their order is reversed here, but it's the same idea. We don't have an emissive. We don't have a normal. Uh, and then for the base color, we want to set that to white. So it already has a tint of white, but we need a white base color image in here. So you can create one yourself. Just go back to Photoshop, uncheck that, uncheck that, uncheck that. No, that doesn't work. Okay. So, yeah. So let's just add a new image on top of that. And we'll hide all of these. And hide that one. Move this up to the very top. Okay. So we hit everything below it. So the only thing is in here. And then we're just going to edit and fill this with white. I turn it on, edit, fill with white. Okay, so there we have that. And then just export that. And we'll call it white. And it's 2048 by 2048, so let's just call it white 2048. Okay, now I can come back over here and build, upload, image, white 2048. Boom. Okay, so I have the white 24 here, put that in base color. 
Okay, and then hit save. So now we've saved our material. And this is our test PBR AO material for pillow one. So we're going to drag that on pillow one. And there it is. So it looks just like putting an AO on a model in the old way. So you have your you have your white color and you have your shading from where from ambient occlusion. So you have the darkness that starts here and fades out as it moves up. You have the shadows from inside where the the surfaces meet and where there's pockets and stuff like that. So you have an AO. And then now we're done. We don't need we don't need Photoshop or any other external tool other than Second Life. And we can create every bit of textures that's on this bed was done this way. So all I did here, I'm going to apply a tint. I'm going to put a tint on this. So you just come up and say, edit, select face, select the pillow, go back to textures. It's got my material applied to it. Just hit edit and then click on tint. And I saved this pink right here. So just click on that. Now I have that. Now, if I want to save this material as a new material, and then I so I can keep it for later and apply it later, um, then I can just go back in here, select the face, edit the material, make whatever changes I want to, and hit save. When you save, it's going to pop up a uh, thing to name it, and we're going to call this Pillow One. Lavender? I don't know what color that is. Lavender. Okay. Now, if I want to make it blue, just edit it, change it from purple to blue. And then save, and we'll call it Hello One. Blue. Now I have a pillow one blue. If I want to apply a texture image to this, then just edit it, set that back to white so that you see the texture without any coloring on it. And then let's apply a material here. And let's say I want to put, um, so I have some microfiber ones. Let's just go find some microfiber textures in here. I have so many textures. It's, this is what I used in the video I did yesterday. Um, uh, let's just, I don't know what, oh, they have preview. Yay. It's just kind of slow. Uh, I don't know what color to use. It's kind of harsh. Uh, oh, I saw a blue. There's a blue. Okay, let's put this blue on here. And now I have a texture on here. Cloth texture, right? Okay, it's a little grainy looking, so we can we can uh, smooth it out. Just edit this. Go to base color because we only want to change the base color. We don't want to change everything else, and then scale it. Let's do a two by two. And see, it didn't affect the AO. The AO stayed like it was, and all all that we changed, only thing we affected was the base color image. Now, if I want to apply this to the rest of the bed, I have to go and create a PBR AO material for each of the parts for this bed. And for this, I already did that. So I have seven of them. So if I want to put that on here, I can go select the face. Um, go back to the complete material, hit edit, set this to white. And then drag that image here. Go back to base color and set this to two by two. I want to put it on here. Go back to complete material, hit edit, change it to white, and drag on. And let's check out. Let's see how it looks. It's it's pretty grainy, so let's smooth that out a little bit. Select the face, go to base color, and let, I think it probably needs to be twice as much because it was bigger. So four by four and there we go now they look about about the same right so there you go and now if i want to save this i can do the same thing i can just go over here and select the face on it 
go back to complete material and hit save and it saves it with those parameters and I will call this hello one blue cloth okay now that I have those materials saved I just go back up here um, to my materials if I want to apply them now I can just put drag lavender on there it is in lavender I can put the blue on or I can put the blue cloth on it's that simple and then this is just a 2d everything on here is just 2d images applied the exact same way so the wood I actually adjusted the glossiness on so let's say I want to make this bedspread shiny how could I do that? So you go in here, select face, uh, edit the material, and then come down here and let's put this to, oh, it is one. So I didn't save that on mine when I did it earlier. So let's go, we're going to make this um, one means fully metallic and zero means highly reflective. So now I've created like plastic, Plastic, look, plastic looking uh, bedspread and see there's no normal so you don't have bumps in here because I didn't use a normal but if I had a normal for that um, material I could also use that so um, let's see this, this is this is way too shiny right so you can uh, adjust that you can go into edit that you can drop let's take the metallic all the way down to zero and see what happens and let's put this up to about 0.5 now it has some shine to it but it's not it's not so bad right but if we go back to zero and one then it's perfectly matte and and i kind of for a bedspread i kind of like that look better now the wood maybe i want the wood to be shinier than it is so for the wood i can go in and edit that and apply some serious shine to it See, now it's got a reflection on the wood. So it gives you a lot more flexibility and creative freedom. But, but the power of doing this and creating these PBR AO materials is you can create awesome looking textures just by editing the material and applying 2d images and you don't need it you don't need substance painter you don't even need pbr materials i didn't use any so i have all these pbr materials over here Where are they? over here i have all these pbr materials right and i could spend days going through here looking for the right one and 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 uh, applying it but for for something like this i don't need to i just use my existing library of 2d images and save it and it's great so anyway that's it i'm going to end this video uh wanted to keep it short so appreciate your time and i hope you like that